So hey, let me just tell you, let's make a deal. Let's make a deal. This is the last service, or the last week of let's make a deal. Uh, as you know, we've had three weeks and this is our fourth week. Let's make a deal. And, uh, and uh, John Tesh will be here next week. Friends Day next week. Let me explain to you before we even get started. Friends Day is an opportunity for you to bring your friends. You bring your family. It's your opportunity to say, I want you just to come and visit because we're going to feed you. And if you tell people you're going to feed them, for some reason they show up. I don't know what it is. I'm one of them. If, you, if I go to your house and knock on your door and you feed me, I'm, I'm going to be like the dog, the neighborhood dog. I'm going to be there at the door tomorrow looking for the same thing. So we're going to feed your, your family. We're going to feed your friends. We're going to get in the pavilion over here and we're going to have dinner on the grounds uh, for both services. There's going to be something when you come in for both services. There's going to be plenty of coffee for both services. And we're going to have that John Tesh guy that flies through the air for both services. So just, 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 just be ready. We're we're excited. We're so excited to have. And, and I, I want us just to get everybody in, that we can get to come to church. Because I believe if we can get them to, to visit, that they'll stay. So let's just do that. And if they stay, we can introduce them to the Lord. So let's just keep that in mind. Let's do that. But I want to show you the last three. If, if you've got that, that one, Gwen. I don't know if you, if you have the last three. Um, weeks that we have that we have preached I didn't tell her about that so she's going to have to go in the archives and find that and you could tell I'm not a computer guy or probably wouldn't have said archives but anyway she's got to go in there and find that and and uh, we're going to show you we we started out with D Jacob and then we went to Job and then we went to Josiah and uh, these are these are very uh, there's a lot of content with every single one of them and we could just scrape a little off the top and and, and put it in the pot so I, I want you to know that that we didn't have an opportunity to feed you with a fire hose on those we just had to take a little little dribble out of the hose so uh, uh, and we're going to do the same thing today so I pray that you go home and you read about Jacob you you read about Job, you study about Josiah, and then you get in, you get in there and get, get deep with these guys. But today we're going to flip another card in a few minutes, but I just want to tell you, this: I, I like to title things just a little differently, and I'm going to title it again this morning a little differently. It ain't over till the buzzer sounds. It ain't over till the buzzer sounds. See, it's football time in Tennessee. I don't know if y'all know it or not. Got a, me and six other, yeah, come on six, let's go. It's football time in Tennessee, and I'm going to be honest with you. We're going, to, we're going to kick this thing off in a couple of weeks, and we've got a brand new everything. And we've got brand new hopes, too. So we got a brand new everything. It's football time, and, and if you know anything about football in Tennessee, you know that term. It's football time in Tennessee. And, uh, and it's a good sound. The only bad sound about it is, is, is my summer's ending. And that's the thing. And I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an options person. I love options. So summer, pretty days, long days gives me more options. But anyway, anyway, I, I just want you to know right here, if you're listening to me, watching me, or if you're in this sanctuary, you, you may not care anything about sports. And, and this, is, this sermon is not about football uh, a, a whole lot. And it's not, about, it's not about sports. It's about our relationship with the Lord. And I just want you to know, it, it doesn't change the fact that football is about ready to start. If you don't like it, it don't change that fact. You know, whether we like it or not, the feel of orange and white is in the air. So I got a friend of mine over in Arkansas and he aggravates me back and forth because he came, he transplanted over there from Florida and, and he says that we have the wrong color orange. So he's a, he's a Gators fan. I tell him, he shoots me pictures and says, I found some faded out orange for you. So I, I texted him this morning or messaged him this morning before I left and said, hey, uh, 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 my friend, go big orange. And I just thought I'd rub it in before I left because it's on my heart. It's on my mind. So see, whether we want to admit it or not, it, the, that feel of orange and white is in the air. And let me just bump that. Something that I've noticed through the years is that the game is always elevated at the next level. The game is always elevated at the next level. See, most high school players, and I, I, I just want to I, I be honest with you, and I don't want to just rain on your parade, but most high school players will never see a snap or, 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 or will from field level on a college level campus or college field they'll never see a snap and they'll never play a game in college they're just, the game is just too fast at that level the game is speeded up at that level it's just another level and and most high school players as good as they were they're just not going to be able to ha hack it on that field 
And everything is elevated at the next level. We've been talking next level for, for nine months. We've been talking next level. Life is no different. Our relationship with Jesus is certainly no different. Let me give you a good analogy. Good players will always play well. Now, good players. Now, we know those guys. We watch them on TV. We have played with some of them back 900 years ago. We know what it's like. Great, good players will play pretty well. Great players will stand out. They're the ones that stand out. They're like, they're, they're, they're like a, 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 a Maddox Yacht. Man, watch him. Watch him on Saturday sometime. He's going to stand out because he's fast as lightning. That's just my, that's just my analogy because I like him. He's a Christ Point kid. But anyway... That's Jason. That's, that's Jason's little boy. He's about that big. Runs right here with glasses on. You watch him. If you get a chance to go watch the Pee Wee football, you'll see a standout. You'll see the great players stand out and run hard. You'll see the great players. Good players play well. Great players stand out. But the greatest players elevate the whole team to another level. They elevate the play of everybody. It's the same for you and me. There's no difference. When we serve harder, in our relationship with the Lord, when we serve harder, when we worship deeper, and when we love greater, we empower those around us to do the same. I can promise you, people are going to follow our lead in worship. And if we don't worship, the ones behind us in the pews won't worship. The ones behind us at the, at, at, at the house won't worship. The ones that we're raising won't worship. But if we will worship harder, we can give the Lord a hand clap. Amen. If we will worship harder, if we will serve harder, if we will worship deeper, and we will love greater, then we will empower those. And at Christ Point Church, that has been, that has been our, our, our vision, our, 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 our mantra for the year, is to go to the next level. Now, are we going to finish everything? No, but we're going to get started all throughout this year. And we're not going to quit just because 18, 2018 turns into 2019. We're going to continue to move everything to the next level. We don't abandon where we were. We keep going to the next level. Let's look at the team. See, every team needs a leader. And let's look at the leader. Let's flip the card. Let's flip the card. See, it's just a different kind of guy. It's a different kind of guy. We don't, we don't have just, we got, we, we've got a little bit, you, you're kind of thinking we're going with the joker mentality. We're going with the Jacob and the Job and the Josiah, but we threw a king in there. All of a sudden there's a king that gets thrown in there, and when we flip that card, it's just totally different. Let me explain to you a little bit about Jesus. Jesus is not one of the guys in the deck. That's why he's the last one to be revealed. Jesus is not one of, just, just one of our military leaders. Jesus is not just one of our Old Testament prophets. Jesus is not just someone that did good at some point in time and now is dead and gone. Jesus is not an equal. Let's get that straight. Jesus is not an equal. He's not an equal in any form or fashion to anything. Jesus is not an afterthought. And he deserves more than to be an afterthought. Jesus is the king. Man, let me say it again and we'll, we'll, we'll clap. Jesus is the king. Let's do that now. Yes. Jesus is the king. And it's not just the story. Hey, see, Jesus is not just a story. Always remember this. Just tell people when you see them. When they say, well, who's Jesus? Jesus is not just a story that's in the Bible. Jesus is the reason for the Bible. See, everything points toward the Lord. Everything points toward Jesus. Jesus is the reason for the Bible. We, wouldn't, we really wouldn't need it if it wasn't for, for salvation in Jesus. He's our king. And the king, when the king rules, he rules everyone. Nobody's exempt from rule just because you don't want to be ruled. You, nobody, nobody has the right to say, I don't want to be an American because I don't like my president. I'm sorry, that's your president. And I don't want to be, I don't want to be under monarchy because I don't like the king. I'm sorry, it's your king. And let me tell you, when people say, I don't want Jesus in my life, well, you got him whether you want it or not. You've got him because when he rules, he rules everything. Jesus is a righteous king. In Proverbs chapter 29, I'm just going to hit on this real quick and bump back off. In Proverbs tw chapter 29, when the, when the righteous rule, I'm going to read a little bit different versions. The people 
rejoice. When the righteous rule, the people rejoice. You know what that means is, like I said a few weeks ago, people don't rejoice when they're sad. People don't rejoice when times are bad. People don't rejoice when they're not able to pay their bills. People don't rejoice when, 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 when the monarchy or the king of the land is, is terrible and awful. But when the righteous rule, the people rejoice because there is, there is contentment, there is peace, there is joy and there is happiness in that atmosphere. So Jesus is our righteous king. So let's not forget that you and I, no matter what level we are, we're the task. And I don't want to confuse you here, but see, the king has a task. And, and, and he tasks people to do. And we are, we are his task. And he will task us to do. He will, he will, he, uh, we, we're part of the relationship with him. We're never going to be an equal, but we're the task. Life is the game, and we are the players. Going to get back to football a little bit. If you don't know, you know, you may be a guy, I don't know. You would know. <laughs> But you may be a guy or a girl and you say, I don't know anything about football. We're going to give you a little one-on-one in here right now. Life is the game. And we are the players and the Bible is the playbook. Somebody's got to call the plays in. Somebody's got... Jesus is calling in the plays. Jesus is calling the plays. But you say, well, wait a minute. Okay, pastor. Okay, let me just, let me just throw this out there. Then if Jesus is calling in the plays, why is my life such a mess? Now think about that, and I, I, I really want you to ask that question. If Jesus is calling in the place, why is my life a mess? Let me just explain to you. I, I'm going to give it to you from a Johnny Hood level. And I've never heard this out of his mouth, but I can, I'm going to tell you what. If Jesus is calling the place, then why have I buried so many family members, sisters, father, mother, in the past few months? In the past year, why is it so hard? Yeah, the, 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 the young family, our, 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 our family, why has it been so tough? If Jesus is calling in the place, then why is my life a mess? I want to jump off of them because they're, not, they're listening to the place. They're getting the place. It's just that, that's life and we're going to rejoice on that side when we get there. But I'm going to tell you how it is. Why is my life such a mess? Well, it may be that we're not hearing the plays that are being called in. Maybe we're not paying attention to the plays that are called in. And when we don't pay attention to the plays, then we'll insert our own play. So when we insert our own play, we're not the coach. We didn't spend hours over here studying how to beat that team. All we are is the quarterback, maybe the lineman. Maybe we're, maybe we're, we're, maybe we're, we're, we're on defense, maybe. Maybe we're tied in. We're part of the play. And, 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 the, and the plays are being called in. And if we're not running the right play because we can't hear what's coming in, maybe communication's not being uh, uh, connected uh, f- to the Lord and we're, playing, we're, we're running the wrong plays and we keep getting beat down and we keep getting beat down and we keep getting beat down. But you see, here's the good part. It ain't over till the buzzer sounds. That's my favorite part. It ain't over till the buzzer sounds. Now, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I remember it's been a long time ago. It was an 06. I remember it. It was an 06. Very first game, I'm pretty sure 06. Very first game of the year, the Colts were playing the Buccaneers. Buccaneers were beating them on Monday Night Football. And there was a guy on that team by the name of Peyton Manning. And that guy and his team scored more points in like, seven minutes and they won that game and I remember it I remember thinking you don't it ain't over till the buzzer sounds as long as that guy's got the ball something about to happen so it ain't over till the buzzer sounds that's the good part let's look at a couple things the king said let's look at a couple things first of all I'm gonna go to John chapter 19 verse 30 I want to look at a couple things the king says I want to key in on something when Jesus had received the sour wine he said it is finished Now I want you to look at that. What the king said. See, something innocent, something pure, something perfectly clean had to be a sacrifice because the word says in Hebrews that 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 was an eternal sacrifice. There had to be an eternal sacrifice once and once for all. And it had to be. So so there had to be an innocent, a pure, a perfect, and a clean sacrifice. Once and for all. See, something has to die for sin to be covered and, and, and atoned for. Jesus became that for you and me. He said, it is finished. It is over. It is done. Now, he didn't say that he was done. 
See, I, I, I don't want us to leave here and say, Jesus is done. No, he's not done. He's not finished. He said, it is finished. He said, the sacrifice is finished. I'm not finished. The sacrifice, the signal's no buzzer sounding. The sacrifice was finished. No more sacrifice will ever be needed. Because if, let me explain this to you. If Jesus gave his life for us 2,000 years ago and it is not good enough and we have to do it again, then he's not God. So here's the thing. Once, I mean, it, that one covering covers everybody. It covers me. It covers you. It covers everybody else. It covers, covers the past, the present, and the future. No more sacrifice. So, I mentioned two things. Number one is, he said it is finished. In the Greek, that word is telestai. Somewhere in there, I put, I'm probably putting a strong southern slang on that thing. So I, I don't know if I'm saying it that right or not, but I'm saying it to where my southern folk can, you know, how y'all doing kind of thing, how your mom and them, I'm saying it kind of that way. So, so telestai means to be paid in full. It means paid in full. So the Greek word, it is finished, says I. You know, in other words, Jesus could be saying literally, it's paid in full. It's paid in full. It's over. It's paid in full. So when you pay something in full, you don't have to pay, a, you don't have to pay for it again. See, you have to pay to get in the game. Now, in a few weeks... In a few weeks, there's going to be a few home game stretches at, at Neyland Stadium. And if you want to go to one of them, you, you know, you just ask, you ask Zach Blakely. He'll tell you, you ain't getting in for free. You're going to have to pay to get in. It, 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 there, there's a, a, a fee attached to admission. If you want to get in, you've got to pay. It ain't free. It's the next level. You know, it costs more to, to, to watch a game at the next level than it does at the prior level. We can, go to, we can go to high school game, costs about six bucks. We go to a, a college game, depending on which one it is, if you can get a ticket, it's a different atmosphere and it's a different cost. See, the game is salvation. That's, that's the, the game is salvation, and if we're going to play it at the next level, then admission is required. If we're going to be involved at the next level, admission is required. And let's look at the second thing that Jesus said. In Revelation 2.17. Let's look at the second thing that the king said. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To the, to the one who conquers, I will give some hidden manna. And this is what I want to key on. I will give him a white stone. I'll give that person a white stone. Now I said a few weeks ago, I love the fact that he says you can hear, can't you? You, you, you got that sense, don't you? I mean, there, there's, you, you possess the senses, and if you've got that sense, then you need to hear what I'm saying. If you have the ability to listen, then you need to listen. And this is what he says, To him who overcomes, I will give a white stone. White stone in those days was admission. It was an admission ticket, so to speak. I will give you an admission ticket. Jesus isn't, notice with me here, Jesus isn't speaking to the individual. He's not saying to the individual, you need a ticket. He's saying to the church. All of, these, all of these seven churches of Asia Minor, he's not talking to the individual. He's talking to the church. He's speaking to the team. He's calling in the plays. And let me explain to you what's going on in, 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 the, in the church of Pergamum. He's basically saying, you're okay. You're not bad. But as a whole, you got some people that are not playing on the team. As a whole, you've got some people that are still doing pagan worship. You've got some people that, you hate these practices of the Nicolaitans the way that I hate them. I like that about you, but you still have people on the team that are not playing for the team. In other words, the team can't win a game if people are rowing in the wrong direction. If you've got two players on the field that are rowing in the wrong direction, if you call into play and they've got it confused, you will mess up. And this is what he's saying. They're not playing well in the sandbox. These guys aren't playing well in the sandbox. So you, you've got to get rid of these guys. And this is what Jesus says. You either got to fix it or you got to get rid of them. He, he, did, he didn't really give us any other option there. He just says if you don't take care of the problem, then you're going to be held responsible as a whole. Talking about the church. Jesus is speaking to the church. Tell your team, he says, tell your team you're doing good, but you've got to take care of the players that are not carrying their own weight. The team looks good, but you're not ready to play at the next level. 
Get your team together because you, those people are going to drag the whole team down. Every one of them. They're going to drag the whole team down. And he's saying, Pergamum, you are doing good. You are living in the heart of Sin City. It's basically what he said. You're living in, in, in the heart of the devil's city. He says, you're living in the heart of Sin City. You're almost a powerful presence. Man, I don't want to leave. I don't want to, I don't want to end the ministry that God has placed on my life knowing that I almost got there. Knowing that I almost entered in. Knowing that we almost led our church to a powerful presence. Man, I don't want to get there. Tina, Tina and I were talking last night. She said, Sunday, sometimes it's just the push. I can't keep up with the way you push. I'm like, honey, tell me what we'll do. We'll back up a little bit. She said, it's just, it's, it, you just drive constantly. And she says it in a good way. She said, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. But you know, if somebody hadn't have pushed, I wouldn't have been invited to church. So I want us to push. I'm going to push us. It's my job to push us. It's my job. So let's give the Lord a hand clap. Man. Man. He says you're almost a powerful church. You're almost a powerful presence. But you lack the one element of unity that these people are, are, are deteriorating. Two times he says to that church in Pergamum. You have some there. You have some who. You have some among you. So the sacrifice is over and the gates are still open. So tickets are still available. But you have some. Who of us in here can say that I have something that I need to get rid of? I have something. And Jesus says, you either got to fix it. Or you got to let me fix it. Or you got to let me get rid of it. So it may, be, it may be my stony, terrible, awful heart. It may be my opinions. It may be my, my pride. It may be my, my, my neglect. It may be my friends. You know what? I'm going to tell you what I think was happening in Pergamum. I believe some of those people that were holding on to those practices of, 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 of pagandry, I believe some of those were best friends. Some of those were brothers. Some of those were family members. Because this is the hardest, hardest parts to deal with. The things that are tightly knit and sewed into our heart. And Jesus says, if you don't get rid of those things, then I, I can't take you to the next level. And if you don't go to the next level, then you will lose. And that's just all there is to it. You have some. What is it in us that needs to be gone? What are we hanging on to? Jesus says either fix it or get rid of it and I'll do it for you. And mission has been paid in full. We have an open invitation to give our hearts to the Lord. To walk in victory and to serve Christ. Here's the good part. It ain't over till the buzzer sounds. It ain't over till the buzzer sounds. Jesus didn't go to the cross for our sins so we could keep on sinning. Jesus didn't do that. He didn't give his life so we could so we could live life without him. And if he thought, now I want you to really grab a hold of this. If you're sitting here and you're thinking, well, I just don't know about the severity or 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 or, or, or the urgency of salvation. I don't even know what we're talking about. If if Jesus thought it was important enough to be tortured. To, well, first of all, to step down from glory, to, to become one of us, to be tortured and die horribly, then, then what he's saving us from has got to be beyond horrible. He's not going to... I don't think Jesus, Jesus would step down out of glory and become one of us, become like us, and die horribly so he could save us from... Uh, uh, just to, uh, save us from, from, from a, a messed up relationship. Or save us from, I mean, he, all that's wrapped up, but it's got to be something deeper. What is the horrible thing that is worth him dying for? It is a torment of eternity in hell. And I'm going to tell you, I don't care if you don't believe it or not, it don't make it go away. It's just like if you, you know, you can get on TV and say you don't like whoever, don't make them go away. And you could say, I don't want a king, but it doesn't make you not have a king. So the thing is, is 
It is, a, it is a, an eternity of eternal torment. And Jesus is like, this is worth me dying for. Not just to alleviate your fusses and argues. Not just to, not just to uh, 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 appease uh, your, 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 your flesh and, and, and just to make you happy and, and to give you a wonderful job. But, and all that's wrapped into the relationship. But I'm doing this to keep you from spending eternity in hell. It's awful. I've seen it, Jesus. Jesus has seen it. He knows what it looks like. He knows what it feels like. It ain't over till the buzzer sounds. The sacrifice is over, but it's still available. I want to throw this one in. I just made this note this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. 519. 2 519. 2 Corinthians 519, if you're making notes. I'm going to read the New King James Version. God has, uh, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses against them. The Greek word for imputing is depositing into an account. The Lord's like, I'm not depositing into your account your sins. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, you know what? If we keep, if we keep taking withdrawals from, if, if we deposit withdrawals every day, we're going to be behind in such a hard fashion, we'll never catch up. Jesus is saying reconciliation is our blank check. Reconciliation is our paid in full. Reconciliation has to be endorsed. You got to turn the check on the back and endorse it. And I, if you endorse that, I'm not going to deposit. I'm not going to allow the world to deposit. I'm not going to hold the deposit against you that you've made. And I'm going to quote Robert Morris. So if you don't like this, you can email him. He said, people don't go to hell because of sin. They go to hell because of unbelief. Hey guys, you were doing this and you stopped on us and you watched us and I appreciate it. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for spending some time with us. I, I pray that you enjoyed the service today. Let me take this opportunity to invite you out personally. Uh, we're located on the square in Sparta. Our service times are at 9 and 11 every Sunday morning. We'll meet you at the door with a hug. We'll meet you at the door with some coffee ready and some donuts if you want. And uh, let me just take a real quick minute to invite you over to our Smithville campus. For those of you who can't drive over to Sparta, drive over to Smithville. 11 o'clock for now at 614 Murphy. Street in Smithville, Tennessee. So one of our campuses, Christ Point Church, we're real people, we're living real lives, and we're serving a real God. Welcome home.